What's cracking my photography friends? I'm TK North and well, I love street photography. So these are my five most valuable tips to not only get you more comfortable taking photos on the street, but to get you taking better street photos. Street photography over the years has become my favorite style of photography to shoot. But this wasn't always the case. Street photography for a lot of people can be really difficult to get started. Definitely true for me. But over time with practice, this definitely changed. So the overall aim of this video is to get you out there shooting more street photography, get you more comfortable doing it, and get you taking better street photos. If I can do that, I'll be happy knowing that I've shared something that I'm really passionate about. So let's jump in. So working backwards, starting with tip number five is keep an eye on your settings, but don't overthink them. So this one might sound a little bit confusing or slightly contradictory to other people's advice, but if you can spend less time worrying about your settings, more time focusing on your composition and be able to shoot quickly, chances are you'll get a much better result. So understanding your settings is obviously really important, but the best way to learn is to go out and shoot. Also remember the reality is for most situations, there is usually a very broad range of settings that can allow you to capture a compelling and well exposed photo, not just one ideal combination of settings for each situation. So my simple tip here is to actually shoot in aperture priority. Full manual control is great, especially in more controlled environments, but in a quickly changing environment like shooting street photography, speed can be far more important. So when your prime objective is to kind of freeze a moment in time, there's actually a really broad range of shutter speeds that will allow you to do this and also achieve a similar result. For me, this is why aperture priority works so well. Most cameras even allow you to set a minimum shutter speed, which can be a super useful way to make sure your shutter isn't getting too slow. What you choose here will depend how quickly the subjects are actually moving, but you could start with setting your minimum shutter to say one over 200 as a good example. In slightly more challenging environments like shooting at night, shooting in auto ISO was another really handy tip. Here, I would always set my max maximum ISO just to make sure that wasn't creeping up too high and my photos weren't getting too grainy. So here again, a good example would be say ISO 1600. Start there and see if this allows you to keep a fast enough shutter speed. With practice, you will learn to master these settings, but remember after a shoot or when you're editing, check back on your settings, analyze was it a successful shot or was there something in your settings that you could change to make that a better photo next time. So on to tip number four, which is getting comfortable shooting people and wandering through a city with a camera in hand. This one probably goes without saying, but it is a super important one to address. And because initially I was quite uncomfortable taking photos of strangers in the street, now I've become super comfortable doing this. So I've got some really handy tips that can help you get a bit more comfortable doing it. My first tip is is to just wander around the city with your camera in hand with no real objective, just to take in the sights initially. Wander around much like you're a tourist exploring a new city, taking in all the sights. As you start shooting, focus more on wider scenes rather than directly at people. This can be one way to get more comfortable shooting strangers in a street. Another really handy tip here can be go out shooting with a friend. If you're around other people with cameras shooting together, it can definitely make you feel a bit more comfortable. Take a few shots of each other in the street even, mix this in with a few more natural street shots. In my experience, this can be far less confronting than walking around on your own when you're getting started. Lastly, try and always be kind and friendly. Interact with people if need be. They're a thing of the past, these things, thing of the past. <laughs> You'll quickly get a sense of whether they are comfortable with you taking their photo or not. I always prefer to avoid any confrontation. I'll politely share if need be that I'm just a photographer taking some street photos. 
most of the time I never have any issues and if you're kind and go about it in the right way, most people will not have a problem with you shooting street photography. All right, on to tip number three, which is using prime lenses. This is a pretty common tip for shooting street photography and one I totally agree with. Although zoom lenses can be much more versatile for some reasons, I think using prime lenses is really the best way to really practice and work on your overall composition, especially when you're wandering around taking street photos. Rather than simply zooming in or out, it really forces you to move around more. Something you should be doing anyway when shooting on the street is moving. The more you can move around, find different angles, lower, higher, walking back and forth. This is really what street photography is all about in my mind and prime lenses can be the best way to learn this. Prime lenses typically also give us more ability to shoot in low light conditions because you can typically use a larger aperture. This also means getting a more shallow depth of field and creating more bokeh in your images. This is something I really love doing with my street photography and just opens up the creative options. My favorite is the 50 millimeter as I find it super versatile, but both 35 and 85 can also be great prime lenses for street photography. Pick just one to start with and shoot an entire session just with that one lens. Force yourself to move around. All right, on to tip number two, which is building experience shooting in various types of conditions. So the thing I actually love most about street photography is that it can be pretty damn challenging. But the key here is not to let that put you off. If you come back from a street photography session pretty underwhelmed and not too happy with the results, perhaps next time just try a totally different time of day or wait for some different weather conditions. Often more dramatic weather conditions actually make street photography easier in some ways, bringing out more interesting scenes. This could be rain or even snow. Other times of day that can be great to get started are afternoons at golden hour. This can be a great time to capture light and long shadows. Also often a good time of day to get interesting subjects leaving the office if you're in a city. Early mornings in particular I also love as the city can look totally different at this time. And for me, I often find it easier to isolate an interesting subject in a frame when the streets aren't as busy. Shooting in different types of conditions is also a really great way to master and understand your camera settings because you'll find out what works in different types of conditions. All right, on to my very last tip, which is hopefully something you haven't heard before, but something that I still practice to this day. So tip number one, set yourself a direct objective or a theme for your street photography session. As you do get more comfortable shooting street, setting yourself an aim or objective for a street photography session can be a really great way to practice and really own in on your skills and also build a particular street photography style that suits you and your photography. This could be absolutely anything, but I'll give you a few ideas. One idea is going out with the specific aim of shooting reflections. Most cities have plenty of different places you could aim these shots, windows, mirrors, phone booths, cars, whatever you see, often making for an interesting frame. Of course, during that session, you don't have to obviously only shoot reflections, but go out with the aim of capturing these type of shots. Another idea could be experimenting with shadows. For this, pick a bright sunny day and target a little while before the sunset, usually during golden hour. Here you'll find nice long shadows and also really nice light. Of course, the options are so broad, you could be trying to capture expressions of people's faces. It could even be to target cinematic type scenes that make you think of movies or something simple with leading lines or patterns. Even something like umbrellas if you go out when it's raining. If you're actively looking for something, chances are you'll see it far, far more often. From my experience, going out with an aim or an objective like this can really help you practice your street photography skills. Next time when you go out shooting whatever, you'll also open your mind up to all these different possibilities that perhaps you weren't looking for previously. To finish off, let's call this one a bonus tip because it's pretty obvious, but remember the key to getting good at any style of photography 
is practice and experimentation. Don't expect to be brilliant on day one. Remember, no one started in this way. I can use my own street photography journey as a prime example here. I was pretty terrible at street photography when I started. Nowadays, obviously, I still have lots to learn. However, I am far more comfortable and I've come a long way thanks to practice and experimentation. Remember, we are all totally different when it comes to photography all trying to find a unique style as photographers. Newsflash, this won't come to you sitting at home looking at other people's photos. You will build this from going out there and shooting and editing and building a style. So get out there and start shooting. All right, if you did find this video valuable in any way, please do hit that like button and remember to subscribe to find plenty more videos just like this one. Keep on creating and keep growing my friends. I'll catch you in the next one. Bye for now.